Hi, I'm Jamie Lewis and welcome back to TheBasis.net. Today I've got a really cool bass that I'd like to share with you. The folks at Ernie Ball were kind enough to loan me this uh, four string Stingray Special. This is a brand new take on the classic Stingray sound. So don't go anywhere. You know you're going to want to hear this thing. <laughs> Okay, so like I just said, this is a brand new iteration of the Music Man Stingray. It may look the same, uh, but this thing has definitely been updated. It's been optimized and modernized to be a bit more of a versatile instrument while still maintaining the, the classic characteristics of the Music Man Stingray that we all know and love. So I guess the first thing to do would be to just show you some of the changes that Ernie Ball made on, on, on this new model, and then I'll play it for you so you can hear what it sounds like. So let's just jump right in. The first thing that I notice is that this bass is a lot lighter than any previous model of Stingray that I've ever held before. It's probably due to the wood that they chose and also some slight contour changes in the body and even lightweight hardware. We've actually got a different bridge and tuning keys over here. So this thing is a little bit easier on the back and even more balanced than some of the previous iterations of this instrument. And back here you can see that we've got five bolts on the neck joint instead of the standard six that Ernie Ball has been using for years, which actually allows for easier access into the higher register. And then we've also got 22 frets instead of the standard 21. It's got an ash body and you can either choose maple, rosewood, or ebony for your fingerboards. And you'll see that the necks now come standard in this roasted maple, which looks really sleek and it's very smooth. It's not glossy and it's definitely not oily to the touch like some satin finishes can feel. And even though it may look the same, the electronics on the Stingray Special has actually seen a pretty major overhaul with powerful neodymium pickups that provide a hotter output and a wider frequency response than before. Neodymium, dymium, does anyone really know how to say that word? It also features an 18 volt preamp instead of the traditional nine volt, which is gonna allow you some more headroom while sculpting your tone. And the three band EQ is said to be more versatile than before, allowing you to get that classic Stingray zing that we all know and love, or being able to morph it into something a bit more mellow or modern or punchy or anywhere in between. So I guess that's really the question here is, can we get that classic Stingray sound out of this instrument that we've all heard a million times? And can we get a totally different sound out of it just by you know, adjusting the preamp settings and, and based on all of these, these improvements that Ernie Ball's put into this bass? Well, we're about to find out. All right, so let's start by just dialing in that classic Stingray tone that we all know and love. And so for me, that means a nice scooped mid, um, a bright, sharp attack, the, the zing that the, the music man is known for, uh, and then also that really throaty, snappy sound that happens when you really dig in playing finger style. I guess the next thing I want to do is, is hear this bass in a slap context because again a lot of players gravitate towards the, the, the stingray for, for when they play slap bass. And another thing that I think the Stingray is perfectly suited for is, is playing heavy music. There's just something about the way that this instrument sits in the mix with, with low tuned guitars, with lots of low end on them. Uh, I don't know what it is. The, the, the real estate that, this, that the Stingray occupies is just perfect. And it's probably due to that big boomy low end that we get and the sizzly top end uh, that, that you'll hear when you're playing with a pick. All right, so let's let that be our baseline. Okay, those were three different examples of a Stingray doing what it does best, playing in a scenario where it typically shines. So now let's see how it fares 
when we push it to its limits. Let's see if we can get this thing to step out of its shell a little bit. Maybe go to a musical style that, you know, typically would cause me to gravitate towards something like a J bass. Maybe a tone that's very smooth with lots of sustained whole notes. Even something in a more modern contemporary rock scenario. Maybe even something really old school sounding where, where typically I would gravitate towards like something like a P bass. So, I mean, as you can see, I really didn't have any trouble getting this thing to play ball. If you're going after the classic Stingray sound, fear not, you've got it. And if you need something a little bit more versatile than perhaps the previous generations of this instrument, then I don't think you'll be disappointed. And also this particular bass only has one pickup on it. They, they do have a version that's got, um, you know, a neck pickup as well. So I, I imagine if you had the two pickup version, you could probably get even more versatility out of it. So here's my thoughts. Number one, um, perfectly balanced. This is this is a great feeling instrument, very light. Um, if, if weight is an issue for you, uh, this thing is not gonna break your back. And compared to an older Stingray, um, this definitely has less top end, so it's a bit more dull sounding. And, and I don't mean that as an insult. I, I mean, it, it's mellower in a good way. Stingrays are typically a little bit too bright for my taste, almost harsh in the top end sometimes. And so this thing will allow you to dial that in, but then also you can back it off and, and get rid of it completely if you want to. And I mean, also, given that this only has one pickup, you're not going to get rid of that throaty bridge position sound that the humbucker is going to give you. But just by adjusting the EQ a little bit and moving my hand closer to the neck, I was really able to round it out and make it sound a bit more mellow than its predecessors. So I, I definitely think it's a much more versatile instrument than any Stingray that's come before it. Now, I do need to be honest here and say that I'm really not a Stingray guy. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the sound of them. I love it when other people play it, but in my hands, for the music that I make, it, it's never felt quite right. But I'm not gonna lie, the Stingray special kind of has me reconsidering that given all the upgrades that Ernie Ball's put into it. So if it was me, here's what I would want. I would want a five string version of this bass, maybe with that second pickup in it, and then a four string classic Stingray. I think between those two instruments, you get all of your music man sounds, you get all the basses covered. So kudos to Ernie Ball for making a killer instrument and be sure to go check them out at musicman.com. Make sure there's a dash in between music and man. And be sure to tell them that Jamie sent you. Hey, if you like what I do, please give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel by clicking on this button up here. And if you really like what I do, come hang out with me at thebasis.net just by clicking on this button down here. Also check out The Basis Podcast. New episodes go live each and every week. And until next time, stay well, and I'll see you again here at thebasis.net.